Sedge, uh, welcome back to Noise11.com. It's always fun to catch up and uh, another new album, uh, Shadowland, uh, and uh, another fine piece of work. Thank you. Hi, uh, hi Paul. Yeah, well, we um, we made this during the COVID lockdown. So in a way, it was the COVID uh, was, I think, for a lot of people who are working in the arts, they, they quite liked the aspect of COVID, which meant you didn't have to be distracted with, with lots of other social engagements and having to go out and do things so we got to stay home and we just concentrated on writing and recording over the two years or so and, and we um got this album out after our previous one uh great south road which came out in 2020 at just when covid was was um taking off so uh you know yeah it's a bit of a, a track record for us but we we got to really concentrate on it and we worked you know really hard for two years and um we're pretty happy with the album uh, the album coming off the back of Great South Road is interesting because you can almost bookend them, can't you? Um, Reg, we've got you talking ab about social issues. Uh, Pete, you're talking about, uh, you know, observations uh, in life in this record. And uh, that is similar to what we had in the uh, in the last record as, as well. Let's go to the, uh, the title track, Reg, uh, one of yours, Shadowland, and a yeah. very interesting song, um, to hear right now, straight off the back of the recent Optus hack, it's almost <laughs> like it's almost like they they did that deliberately just to promote this record. That's good. Well, thank you, Optus. It's good <laughs> to have them, people promoting that record for us. Well, you know, I mean that you know this whole I sort of I just read a book called um, Surveillance Capitalism, and it's just about the. You know, I mean, everyone's aware of the fact that all our, our phones are spying on us now and our Google music systems are spying on us and um, and all the machines are at now communicating with each other as well as with humans, which is slightly disturbing development. You've got a reference in there to OK Computer. Is that a Radiohead reference? Yeah, no, it is because, you know, they're, they're was, their OK Computer was very um, positive. Mine is not so positive. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Peter, uh, Nina Simone, this is sort of the the love story, I guess, on the album, uh, talking a bit about, um, you know, something that happened to you many years ago that continues to well, Yeah, well, I don't like to be too overt about these things, but it was just a, a song about the reminiscence of travelling and um, going back, you know, to when you know, a, a relationship started for me, which became a, the, the main one of my life. And um, being in London in 1987 when we were traveling with the mentals and um, going to, I you know, just, I hooked up with a friend who, you know, just, who was a mutual friend from Sydney and uh, she's still a friend <laughs> to put it, to put it, uh, paraphrase that, you know, uh, what, what you could uh, describe it as, but no, it's, it's a song about um, just about, you know, memory and, and, um, and, going back to, you know, a, a time which seems a long time ago, but, um, you know, from where we are now, it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a big, big change, you know, just when you, when you talk, we were talking before about, you know, before we came onto the interview, but just talking about time and, uh, you know, the, the decades roll by very quickly. So it's, so it's just interesting. I mean, you know, it's an, it's a, in a way, time is just one of those subjects that creeps into a lot of songs anyway, I think for a lot of songwriters as, as you, um, you know, if you, if you keep it up, and we've been doing it for a long time now. And then I first, you know, I started with Metal as Anything in 1977 and started writing songs at that stage. And uh, we're still at it today. So it's an interesting sense of the continuum of of being a songwriter and working in the arts and, and working, you know, in, in a band. And and the travelling, we don't do quite as much anymore and, I, and on that scale of that we did once upon a time with the Metals. But... Um, uh, no, we're still at it, we, you know. So yeah, that's a song that's that that's um, that that means a lot to me. It's a very personal one. And the name uh, Nina Simone is a nice name check there, and uh, it sort of reminded me of when Dog Trumpet had kind of done this before in the past with uh, Ray Davies and the Kinks. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Or a, a biographical song that was. Well, yeah. This but yeah, you've got this, the, the main reference, the, the Ray Davies reference. You know, I mean, this could go on forever. You could continue <laughs> to write songs yeah. with artist names in them. Well, yeah. I've, I've written a few songs over the years with that are, yeah, you could term as biographical songs. You know, a song about Marianne Faithful, called Marianne with the Mentals. 
um, Dorothy Parker's hair, another one on uh, the last Mentals record called Garage that we contributed to in the late nineties and uh, other songs about um, that allude to Virginia Woolf and ABBA over the years. So yeah, it's a, it's a, that's another good subject really is the, is the bio, biographical kind of topic because Glad you can say things that, yeah, and like the Ray Davies one, it was, it was sort of about what we were experiencing ourselves and then thinking about, you know, people and, and music or events that you're interested in. And, and Nina Simone, at the time in 1987, My Baby Just Cares For Me had been re-released and they had a, one of those claymation videos and it was, I think it went right up the top of the charts around the world. And um, so it was it was, a, it was a good thing for, for Nina to have that song come out at that stage. And um, uh, we, we, I went to a secondhand record shop with, with uh, my friend Susan, and we I uh, bought her the um, first Nina Simone record, um, and uh, and we bought some you know other things, shoes and secondhand books. So that, that I just put all that into the lyrics of that song. Shoes and secondhand books would also be a good title for a song. Next record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Reg, uh, I would like to see you as the host of the 7.30 report or Q&A or something like that. I mean, <laughs> fucking idiots. Uh, yeah. What a great social commentary. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's always been alarming how sort of cruel and irrational some humans are, particularly nations, these enormous nations that have got these ridiculously huge arsenals and armies and are quite willing to use them to get their way or bully their neighbours or bully their own citizens often. So it's just, I mean, it's kind of vaguely from the point of view of an alien observing human race and being slightly, you know, annoyed and alarmed by what the humans are up to. So, yeah, that's what it's basically about. Religiosity, is that the word? Um... Sorry? Religiosity. Oh, religi like yeah, religiosity. Well, you know, things, these these are kind of um, uh, concepts that humans have thought up, you know, religion and money and empires and nations, but, uh, but particularly um, one of the most poisonous and useless kind of um, human tendencies is patriotism. You know, patriotism is, it leads to so much so many horrible things you know and and um is often used as a as the excuse for wars or or keeping you keeping your citizens you know g'd up about about having a war or engaging in it as is, yeah where nationalism is expressed that way with flag waving and you know yeah patriotism nationalism the same same, yeah. same thing same concept really feeds, it just feeds into extremism and you know that that particularly that right-wing tendency to go that way and that i think both shadowland and and fucking idiots are both um songs about you know being rightfully paranoid really <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a scary world yeah no uh, my my wife describes me as a uh, gloomy catastrophist which is pretty true yeah can't argue with that <laughs> no <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> why are we all smiling there's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's good re there's good reason for gloomy catastrophism yeah, as with the uh, Great South Road album, there was a Reg song, a Pete song, a Reg song, a Pete song, and that uh, template seems to have followed through onto Shadowland. Uh, you know, and the next one, uh, Sitting Still, Peter, that's that's one of yours. It is, it is, and and it's not a formula that that we go, you know, him him me him me. It's, we do break that a little bit, you know that that that, that sequencing. Um, yeah, sitting still is. I'm, I'm, look, it's a song about. I'm not even too sure what it's about when you when you come to think about it. Well, I'm not thinking about it. I, I wrote that a while back, and you you. Um, I mean, it, it's a it's a song about sort of a, a, another personal song, sort of from a very personal standpoint. Probably, a lot, I think a lot of the songs came out of the, the time of COVID too. You know, just sort of. Um, dealing with a new world, new circumstances, and looking at things from a slightly different perspective. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of instrumentals on this album, um, Olive Hollow. Um, you know, tell me about how that one was constructed. Oh, well, look, at, look, 
we we um we both write a lot of songs and a lot of songs that never get finished and, you, and so I've got uh, you know a thousand ideas as as just um, musical that you know just idea like dashed off sort of 30 seconds of this or that or a feel or a chordal thing and every time I pick up a guitar I think oh that's that's you know you play something you think that that sounds interesting so I record it on my little iPhone recording um you know the, the recorder in the iPhone and I've got like literally hundreds of those so that was just one of those that I thought oh that's that's got a good it's got a good feel to it and a lot of them do have you know as as instrumentals they could you we could have probably a whole record of instrumentals quite easily from from all those uh, you know ideas that we have for songs that never get finished and sometimes you have lyrics for them that you just can't you know something you just can't knock it to, together you know you have a, a good verse or something that sounds like a good m melodic chorus but I've got so many songs that, I, that still haven't been finished. Some songs come out and you finish them really quickly in, in one in one sort of um, you know period of you know a, a days or or a, or a week, and then you think, oh, that's great! I you know I wish I could do that more often. And then some songs take ten years to finish. And anyway, Old Apollo was one of those that was. I just thought, oh, look, I'm not going to wrestle with trying to you know meld lyrics with the with the music. So it just came out as a instrumental we've got two instrumentals on this album so we'll, we'll get to the other one at, at the um on the other side of the record at the end i'm, I'm thinking two sides because we've got a vinyl version of the record so it's nice to have an a side and a b side oh, absolutely uh red sheep of the long white cloud uh, uh, another commentary uh record you're talking about mass enthusiasm leaves me cold uh which sort of uh continues on that uh, theme that we were talking about earlier on with sort of that uh you know the uh the mob mentality yeah definitely no exactly very very frightening mob mobs they sort of they become a become an entity of their own and when people become you know excited and overly enthusiastic about things they often become violently stupid unfortunately so it's good yeah it's a little bit about that it's also i guess complaining about you know uh, over, over sort of influential um, gatekeepers, you know, curators and and um, critics and stuff like that. You know, so it's kind of basically another another bit of um, you know ranting paranoia. <laughs> we we <laughs> love your rants. It's I mean it's also you know it's, it's you know the idea that that the sheep of of the long white cloud, which is New Zealand, of course, have sculpted the country by walking around, which they kind of have done. Yeah. Um, so and it happens a bit here too, not not, not as much as in New Zealand. They've got more sheep. Yeah. Uh, Peter, another one of yours, the Ballad of Clayton Luby, uh, based on a real person. Yeah, a fellow I went to school with um, from late primary school right to high school. Oh, he didn't actually finish high school, but uh, he was an interesting guy, just a sort of a, a bit of a rat bag, um, uh, great surfer. Because I went to a, a surfing high school up in the northern beaches of of Sydney from coming from New Zealand. That's where we ended up living because I think my parents thought it was very much like Auckland, the leafy North Shore and with the beaches and the coast. Uh, anyway, he was, Clayton was, he, he, he lived a fairly, well, a very rambunctious sort of life, a bit like a pirate really, you know, like fearless guy who did things that most of us wouldn't wouldn't do and ended up, I think, in jail a couple of times and, and lived in Bali and had a Balinese family and uh, unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, no, he was a, he was he was a good guy, and he liked art. And his his uncle was um, Keith Luby, a well known Australian painter from the sixties and seventies. Um, so he had that kind of an artistic a love of art, and you know, and also a love of just having a good time and surfing. And um, you know, there's one part, there's a line in the song where he's in um, uh, when you were locked in Kashu Mo, which the um, Kashu Mu, which the uh, mispronounced i'm sure name for jail in japanese that i that i put in there because he did spend a couple of years in a japanese jail yeah i'm sure paul mccartney would know that word then as well as well yeah, yeah right well i don't think paul was in for too long but you know <laughs> similar, similar similar subject matter that got them in trouble yes okay <laughs> And and just proving that we don't have that Reg Pete Reg Pete template because you've got the next song as well. Um, uh, no more, no more traveling. Oh, no more traveling is definitely a, a COVID song. You know that was sort of written in the in the midst of the 
first or second wave of, of COVID lockdowns that, which, you know, I remember when COVID started thinking, oh, well, we'll get the, um, you know, they'll lock down for a couple of weeks and we just get, you know, get the painful part out of the way. That'll be all right. You know, interesting. No one really could foresee what was coming that two weeks turned into two and a half years. Well, th- you know, a long, we're still, we're still dealing with it now mm. almost three years later. So um, yeah, that, that's a song, you know, literally about no more traveling, no more festivals, no more, you know, no more usual um, uh, uh, affairs of, you know, people getting out in the streets and going to work. And so, you know, and, and as a musician, I suppose, you know, and an artist, a visual artist, we spend a lot of time at home anyway. So in some ways that was the silver lining for us that we got to, you know, do that without having any other distractions, which was, which is, you know, as I said before, kind of <clears throat> resulted in us making this album and um, being able to concentrate on this and, you know, uh, not have to do too many other things while we're doing it but yeah no more traveling it's you know, it just talks about talks about you know my neighbor just passed away and even though you know that's a bit of artistic license but um it, it definitely touched a lot of people and you know people we know who did who did pass you know over that time so um yeah you know uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we're if we're really out of this the whole COVID experience, I think it could be, it may, you know, it might be something we live with forever f- with f- from now on. So I don't know, there might be more songs along this, along the same track. Mm. Now, Reg, uh, it's normally Pete that uh, we have for the human observation on, uh, will it yet be thus? Uh, you know, it's really Reg Mombasa actually with a human observation this time around. <laughs> oh yeah, I suppose it's kind of, yeah, it's, it has some autobiographical elements and a and a and a little bit of ranting in the bridge. Um, I, I, yeah, it's kind of it's, it's about it's about being you know being a, I guess a daydreamer and not not quite part of the mainstream. Looking out the window and thinking about other things and what you should be thinking about at the time. You know whether it's schoolwork or work or you know whatever it's basically trying to i guess trying to um avoid um (laughs) real life or something also that's pretty universal most people do do that spend a lot of time you know daydreaming staring out windows and thinking about being somewhere else that's right yeah it's a good pastime to have uh, we've we've got the uh, the biblical reference earlier on in fucking idiots where you're talking about the uh, hairy old man with a beard who lives in the cloud and uh, now into invisible things you're talking about things like an angel maybe a devil it's kind of you know a thread going through those songs too isn't there yeah no i pre- i pretty much believe in everything and nothing simultaneously if that makes any sense i mean i, I don't i don't know whether there is an afterlife but uh, I don't reject it. Some people say no, there's definitely not, and others say people say yes, there definitely is. Um, and I suspect that there's something else going on. Besides. Agnostic, you're yeah. you're an agnostic. I, yeah, I guess I, I, I suppose so. Technically, yeah. Well, you're admitting uh, it. Yeah, that's what you that's uh, what you're saying. There may be a there may be a great spirit in the very small at the subatomic level, or there may be a great spirit at the very large at the um at the uh, inter interstellar into intergalactic level yeah yeah i suppose on on the scale we're all somewhere in there some people are you know obviously quite they they, they suffer from religiosity but um That's as right. we said before i think i'm probably sort of more atheist but with agnostic tendencies so you know about yeah. about two on the on the scale I, I definitely suspect anyone that has that says definitely what is going on in terms of re- religion or an afterlife or or you know, spirits and demons and ghosts. Anyone that says a hundred percent this is this is the case is a liar and is probably wrong. Well, there's only one yeah. way to find out, isn't there? That's right. <laughs> we'll, we will all find out. Who, when we yeah. Who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter, up to you again. Back room. When did this song come into being? Oh, look, you know, I'm like I'm. I've got only one subject really here, back to COVID. I mean, I think again that was a song that it it sort of it wrote itself about two or three times with, with me trying to insert myself in there at times to control it. And I it, I recorded it one way, and uh, that one I ended up obliterating that version of it and rewrote it uh, with a different feel, and then added more lyrics and 
you know, change the sort of sense of it. But it's, I think it is something to do with, we, when we were going through COVID, like a lot of other musicians, we, we ended up on Facebook and we did quite a few Facebook shows. Um, just the two of us, me and myself in the, in the little back room here where we record, where I got my recording studio set up and we made this record. And so we, um, we did, you know, we did, uh, well, well, quite a series of, of Facebook uh, appearances you know what what you call a show, you know I suppose. You know that we and we came back through lots of old material from the from Dog Trumpet, and and also the the songs that we wrote for the Mentals, and songs that we really hadn't played. Probably some of them we never played live, and some of them we hadn't played for decades. And other ones like Dog Trumpet songs that we've never, you know, we we may have visited at the time, but not for a long time. We've been going for thirty years, by the way, with Dog Trumpet. So quite a bit of material there. And maybe, maybe we should put out another album of, um, of of outtakes or alternate songs like Taylor Swift's done that. So we should be copying her, really. <laughs> well, yeah, I, if, it, if it works for Taylor Swift, it, it's got to work for Dog Trumpet, you would think, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would think I so. I would have thought she would have been following in your footsteps, not the other way around. Well, that's, that's <laughs> hard to say. You know, the donkey, what was it, the donkey and the carrot? <laughs> um, Tudor Blues ends off the album another instrumental yeah well we actually recorded that one around the time of the last album but it, it didn't make it onto the last one and then we just let we left it um, lying fallow and then listened to it so oh, that sounds that sounds pretty good and so we pretty much just had to be mixed and um, mastered and uh, and it, oddly enough it acts a, a little bit of the melody was I sort of pinched from one of my earlier songs and didn't quite realise it that's right. Hmm. The what song you... was, I'll, I'll tell you what the song was, because you, you weren't going to ask, I thought, you know. It was uh, Lord uh, and Lady Pumpkin, wasn't it? That, that's it, Lord and Lady Pumpkin from um, Pumpkin. from the Antisocial Tendencies record, I think it was. Yeah, that's oh, right. Okay. I, could, I could be wrong there, but, you know. But, yeah, no, I, I don't think you spotted it, but I could hear that I could hear that, that, that melody that you used, but it was a, a bit like an you know, like, uh, Elizabethan melody anyway. Yeah, no, it's good to steal from yourself rather than other people. Oh, it's very environmental to recycle. <laughs> yeah. Maybe um, Henry VIII may have actually written that melody. You never know. So, yeah. 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 Plagiarism goes a long way. He's a good songwriter. <laughs> yeah. So, 2023, there will be uh, dog trumpet shows uh, around the country. Uh, how much yeah. of this album will be performed? Well, um, we've been doing a few shows. We've we've been we've you know we've been playing about uh, uh, several songs off the album. So um, yeah, we've uh, played four, know, at four at the moment, and we'll, we will yeah, expand that. We'll, we'll be expanding so as many songs as we can as we can teach ourselves. Because mm -hmm. it's it's one thing to record them and write them, at, you know, and then record them one way, but then playing them live is always a bit different. And um, on this record, there's there's quite a bit of organ, which we don't have an organ player in the band. I mean, I just did that in the studio, but um, uh, so we're sort of you know you 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 represent them and and reinvent them a little bit as you play. So we're still having an interesting time doing that, which is which is good. We won't probably play and, you know, them and, all and the live. And the live band, we've got um, Bernie Hayes on bass and Jim Elliott on on drums. So. Um, they're really good players, so it's it's interesting hearing other people then bring you know those guys bringing you know their um their take on the songs. Mm. There's quite a quite a few of our songs we've never actually played live through the through our, our recording history. Mm. Yeah, just because they're a bit tricky to play live or a bit too complicated or you can't you know. Which is why why we played quite a few of them in those Facebook shows we did you know which we. We told, we were learning songs that we really had you know, literally never played live. That was, was interesting to do. Not not an easy thing to do with a band. It was sort of easier that, to do that with the two of us, and that, that was good fun. But you know, we we, we we may not repeat that. Yeah. Well, uh, Shadowland is the new album for Dog Trumpet, and it's probably a good time to go back and refresh on Great South Road as well. We'll just put that whole COVID era into one big double album if you like <laughs> well yeah with COVID, with um with the great south road you know because we when we released it as covid was just that first wave was hitting and they started shutting down everything and the airports were closing we were thinking at that stage we had a lot of shows booked we were going to be touring into state and so all that went out the window and we actually never picked it up again so we'll be you know three years later we'll be coming to melbourne in um 
early 2023. So we're looking forward to that. It's a, it's a big, it's a big gap. Yeah, for that four-hour show, so you can fit in all the songs that we missed. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, that's true, actually. We, and we'd be playing those songs off Great South Road and Shadowland for the first time. So, so you know, something new. Yep. Well, we look forward to that in uh, 2023 and the album out now. So, thank you, guys. Oh, thank, thank you, Paul. Thanks for having us on.